Good morning. Thank the scientific committee for the invitation. My disclosure is Gore has sponsored me for this trip. As you know, EVAR platforms have two components, 10 graphs are deployment systems, and both are inherently related for uh, procedural success and long-term performance. The Gore Excluder is a short modular stent graft with an exoskeleton that has a full diagonal stent, has a low permeability PTFE, and have active infrarenal bars uh, as fixation and mechanism. Innovations are brought from Gore in the last couple of years, the dry shield, uh, sheath that uh, really makes this procedure bloodless, as well as the C3 delivery system. This allows you to reposition the, um, the device by constraining the trunk, uh, disengaging the hooks, both uh, moving the graph either vertically or horizontally when you need it. The C3 stands for Control, Confidence, and Cannulation Assistance. I'll show you quickly uh, the ease of this uh, procedure. You advance the endograft, you'll see the control handle, you remove that and you deploy up to the gate, the Ipsy limb. Uh, after you have that, if you have any cannulation issues, moving the um, gray knob to clockwise, you'll be able to move this device uh, in the horizontal axis, allow you for easy cannulation. You see that the device is reconstrained at this time, and then you allow it to go up and down as you need it, then reposition the device one more time remove the repositionable wire system and then do a pin and pull technique uh, to deploy the APC uh, limb. So this is how fluoroscopically it will look and you have about 40 millimeters uh, from the top of the graph to the flow divider and you'll see that the first 15 millimeters of the recon is reconstrainable this time. The next generation will actually be reconstrainable all the way to facilitate even more gate cannulation assistance. You see how it looks fluoroscopically reconstrained and as you reposition the device with full opposition the aortic wall. I'd like to show you three cases, 6.5 centimeter infrarenal aneurysm in a 90 year old uh, male. You'll see the CT scan here. You see the anatomy. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. You have an acute uh, 75 degree turn to the left of the patient, a short ceiling zone proximally, and then an acute reentry angle to the aneurysm sac, which is right sided with no iliac axis, some calcification. So in our preoperative planning and measurements, you'll see that this patient has a 24 to 25 millimeter uh, over a 13 millimeter length, so a short fixation and sealing zone, a left proximal angulation 75 degrees, uh, right distal sac angulation that may condition the access to the gate and no access issues in the iliac system. This is with a stiff wire, there's a Lundquist wire placed there, and you see that this is uh, quite a good angulation throughout. Uh, this is the angiogram that shows that the stain graft is positioned in the lesser curvature of this particular end, uh, aneurysm sac. It's an under deploy excluder. You have the right to the, uh, the gate to the right of the patient at this time. So we um, reconstrain the system, move the patient's gate to the left, and uh, reposition the graft. And as you can reposition the graft in this difficult angle, you see that we actually partially coverage the left renal ostium. If we didn't have the repositional component, this would have been probably something that we need to salvage the renal stent. So allow it to reconstrain the graft the second time, and then use the pulling down the device to have maximization of the proximal and ceiling fixation zones. After that, because we thought this was a kind of a high risk hostile proximal neck, decided to actually uh, balloon this for uh, avoiding early on a migral, um, caudal migration. Uh, so we did that, and then after that, we did an up and over technique for cannulation of the gate and complete the repair. This is the final angiogram showed by Lyle Payton renal arteries, adequate apposition proximal distally without evidence of endoleak. The second case is 5.2 centimeter, 59 year old asymptomatic infrarenal. And the anatomy in this case has a hostile neck represented by a pretty short taper below the left lower renal artery, uh, thrombus circumferentially, and then the rest of the aneurysm itself, it's pretty much unremarkable. So the pre-procedural planning, the measurements were 24 to 29 millimeters over only 10 millimeters of length, short fixation and sealing zones, a reverse taper and circumferential thrombus with again, no gate uh, 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 or access issues anticipated. There's the endograft with a newer olive uh, radiopaque system as well. You have the graft deployed uh, above the renal arteries with reconstrain, confirmed we were above the renal, you see there, the left renal artery there. We uh, reconstrained it for the first time, bringing the endograft down. Again, this is a 10 millimeter neck we're uh, approaching. Uh, and because of that, the gate and the relationship to the uh, contralateral sheath is a little bit difficult for cannulation. So reconstrain again for the second time, move the uh, gate horizontally in the horizontal axis to allow cannulation. We did that with the KMP catheter and then position the KMP in the ostium of the lowest renal artery 
um, to, again, use this as an endo wedge technique to uh, maximize, again, the ceiling zone. So having that parameter, uh, the left renal artery catheterized, we reconstrained it for the third time, and then vertically um, push the device up to, again, maximize the proximal fixation and ceiling in this 10 millimeter neck. Uh, we ballooned this, and after that, completed the deployment as any other excluder graft you will do, pretty intuitive. The last case is a 5.7 centimeter sterile proximal pseudoaneurysm of the uh, status post autobifemoral bypass graft. This is a patient uh, that you can see here has from the left um, lowest renal artery to the origin of the autobifemoral bypass graft limbs about seven centimeters uh, on length, which is exactly the amount of um, distance that you have from the top of the gate, from the top of the device to the gate. This is just the coronal views to show pretty much the same thing. Uh, so the challenges for this particular case, the neck expanded from 25 to 29 millimeters over about nine millimeter length of native. There was, the distance was exactly seven centimeters. So the gate had to match with the autobifemoral bypass graft. And uh, again, we went up uh, above the renal arteries, were able to uh, maintain, constrain the device, deployed it, reconstrain it, bring it down, matching exactly the contralateral um, left limb of the autobifemoral bypass graft. And this took us to plan a lot and to execute about 10 minutes of operation. Uh, so in summary, the C3 delivery system has increased the EVA eligibility rate in our institution. As an operator, it gives you peace of mind that while tackling difficult anatomy, you do have this three times reconstrainable and repositionable modes for this device and you can have cannulation issues as well that you can solve uh, easier. And nationwide, by GORE data, the utilization of aortic cath has decreased significantly. Thank you very much for your attention. Missão organizadora.